the story basically has four, that I'm going to test that we're going to tell now has basically four components. The first one is on how we actually establish the Maastricht University Green Office here, how we then establish rootability as a spin off from the Green Office in order to spread the model, how we then came from the idea of growing an organization to actually building a movement of different student led sustainability offices, and then the final part is really focused on 2017. How did we use online learning in order to get to a much wider reach? Now, there are four parts to the story, and I was asked a couple of months ago to give prepare this presentation here. And then I also reached out to lots of other people who were involved in this because, of course, I didn't pull this off alone. And the cool thing is that a lot of them came. So we have Alian, we have Anza, we have Valentin, and we have Tim over there. And you see there are four parts to the story, which basically means each of them is going to do one part, and I will come back at the end, which means less work for me, um, apart from preparing all the presentation and also allowing other people to shine because in the last years I had lots of opportunities to already tell our story. And we will start with Valentin, who will kick us off, taking us back until 2010, so a long time ago, and telling us how the Green Office actually started. Thanks, Philip. Uh, well, I'm Valentin. Um, uh, I studied at UCM uh, from 2008 to 2012, and uh, as Felix already mentioned, uh, I'm going to take you back to the beginnings of uh, the establishment of, of the Green Office here in Maastricht in 2010. Um, at the time, the, the university already had a, a number of, of sustainability of bodies or institutions. Um, there was a sustainability committee. There was an environmental coordinator, um, and uh, especially uh, surrounding ISIS, there was a, a community of, uh, of uh, successful and well-paid uh, sustainability terrorists. Uh, I, I just heard that now they, uh, they're quite adamant about being called ICIS, it's understandable. Yeah. Um, but um, while they were doing uh, great work, they, they failed um, to, to really create a dynamic within the institution um, um, to really change things within the university. Uh, on the other hand, there were uh, a lot of student initiatives working on, on sustainability at the time, um, but they were lacking access to the institutional resources and the decision-making power within the university uh, to really make a difference. Um, so sustainability was not sustainable. And um, uh, when we were try like thinking about what we could do about uh, this uh, situation, we came up with this idea of a student-led and staff-supported university department together with uh, some students from different faculties, um, which uh, would consist of uh, a number of student employees and student volunteers, a staff member, uh, a budget and resources, uh, a high-level supervisory board for uh, input and legitimacy, um, and the mandate to, to manage sustainability at the university, uh, which we called uh, the Green Office. Uh, and uh, to our surprise, the university and eventually the executive board actually liked the idea. Um, so we, we could open doors in September 2010. Um, and uh, we're in a bit of a blank slate situation where we were um, uh, trying to see how to actually go about this. And then we started with uh, modeling our portfolios based on the, the main areas of, of activity of, of the university. We have education portfolio, research, community, operations, and, and governance. Um, and while it was uh, tricky at times to bridge the gap between um, sustainability activists at the, the Landbauerland, which some of you might know, uh, with the boardroom at, at Minder Rudersberg, we, we all learn the language um, uh, to impress such as low-hanging fruits or quick wins and these kinds of things. Um, uh, and uh, actually um, managed to pull off quite a few interesting uh, projects in the, in the first years, including um, a Green Office Academy, a PhD program, a living lab, uh, a, a Green IT business case, uh, but also um, sustainability report, a vision, a roadmap, uh, a sustainability policy, um, uh, and of course lots of events to uh, grow and, and connect our community. Um, and then in 2012 we had our first uh, copycat, uh, uh, Wageningen University also opened a green office. Um, and a bunch of us who were just finishing our studies in Maastricht back then 
um, saw this as an opportunity to uh, um, uh, keep working together and to uh, sort of found rootability, which is why I'm going to pass the stick to Arya. Thank you. Hi, I'm Arian. I studied here at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences uh, from 2008 to 2012. And 2012 was the time when the first uh, entrepreneurship centers were starting and were inspiring us to also start our own startup. And we, at the time, we did an analysis of the market possibilities. So in the Netherlands, there are about 14 universities, whereas in Germany, there are about 400 universities. So the obvious step was to go to Germany and to try it there, and then where to go, of course, we went to Berlin. And so we opened door in September 2012 in Berlin, um, trying to establish a company, going through all the legal stuff that is necessary to set up a company by law, finding an accelerator, which we found in the Freie University of Berlin, who helped us to set up the company, and then to see how we could uh, generate impact by working together with all these 400 universities. We will hear later that we were very successful now looking back in the Netherlands, capturing nearly all of the universities here in the Netherlands, whereas we were less successful in Germany. And this is something that you learn then along the way. In the first weeks and months, uh, we had to coordinate across um, different continents and also time zones um, because um, Ulrich was working at that time for another startup in California. Uh, Valentin was doing an exchange semester of his master program in Argentina. Felix was still doing his uh, travel around the world, he was in China. And so we're trying to keep the people together because we were uh, wanting to continue working as a team where we had successfully worked together here at the University of Mass. Um, half year in, we were successful in establishing the first partnerships with NGOs. We established contacts with politicians talking about sustainability and how we could fund that in higher education. Uh, we had our first workshop in Helsinki. We had different keynotes um, on sustainability conferences and we were consulting uh, the University of Amsterdam on the first project of setting up the Green Office. Um, over the time, uh, we also did some travel, um, going especially to the UK and to the Nordic countries where there were some Green Offices being set up. We had different retreats talking about um, our strategy, which changed from a full profit to a non-profit company, uh, focusing on, on a more premium business model of giving out the idea of how to set up this Green Office for free and supporting them via workshops. Um, because we made the experience that this was better in the area of sustainability in higher education. Overall, uh, we're successful because the growth of the greenhouse accelerated and we managed to increase it from two in 2012 to nine greenhouses in 2014. And then in 2014, also the first European greenhouse summit took place, which was the birth point for the greenhouse movement. And now Tim will tell us a bit more about the greenhouse movement and how that about the development of the Thank you. Yeah, so in Berlin 2014, we got uh, the established Green Office um, together for the first time to learn from each other, to see, to share experiences, come up with a vision for the Green Office movement, and that was like kickoff for the Green Office as a movement, as a network of uh, um, like-minded, impact-oriented uh, teams at different universities rather than just individual isolated green offices and um, so that really kickstart this as a movement and I'll say a little bit about how this kind of growth of the movement um, happens over the, over the last few years and um, one really big accelerator was that we got a prize from the UNESCO in 2015 that uh, acknowledged the green office as an impactful um, education for sustainable development program and we got a prize money of $50,000 that uh, helped us to actually get a new team on board because a lot of people who were involved up till then, they had to move on to other careers as we didn't really have income uh, till then. And with this grant, we were able to have some positions and uh, organize some of the activities that we'll share with you in a second. So this was also the first moment that we shifted from a white middle class German male only team to having also some white middle class women on board as well. <laughs> uh, so diversity has always been a bit of an issue. But uh, at least in the Green Office movement, it's 70% uh, women actually. So it's a very female driven movement. <coughs> um, so yes, we, we gave uh, workshops to uh, people who wanted to set up a Green Office locally and help them how to adapt the model to their local university context, um, but also for existing Green Offices help them become more impactful as a team. And um, 
as there were more and more green officers popping up, especially in the Netherlands at first, uh, Studenten van Morgen, which is a national network here, um, launched a green office coordinator and that would help uh, existing green office here in the Netherlands to learn more from each other and to become more impactful. Uh, but as the movement grew beyond the Netherlands, uh, geographic distance was a barrier, so we launched also some online formats for exchanging experience and supporting each other. And um, the face-to-face -face element is still important though, so we also had some events where people could gather once a year to meet each other face-to-face -face, um, from different countries. Uh, like an excursion here in Maastricht uh, to see where it all started, um, or the annual Green Office Summit, but really Green Office from almost all um, six countries in Europe that have Green Office so far um, came together to build a community to share experiences and come up with plans and projects. Uh, we also have a Facebook group um, where people can share ideas and successes, questions, and um, a resource hub with all kinds of materials like good, good practice guides, templates, projects, and overview of challenges and successes. Um, yeah, so those were some of the mechanisms that we developed, and uh, Anzon will say a little bit more about uh, yeah, how we can scale impact with these kind of online projects. Yeah, hi, so uh, my name is Anzon. <laughs> uh, I studied here at the Faculty of Law between 2012 and 2016. And uh, I wasn't part of the founding team, but I joined a bit later than the first green office and then also visibility. And I'll share a bit about what we've been doing in the last two and a half years, basically since 2017. Up to that point of 2017, we became pretty good at supporting people of how to set up a green office when they contacted us. Um, so there are people who heard about the model, maybe because they studied, they did a change here at the university, had a green office, so they heard about a green office in their city, and they wanted to set one up and they contacted us. And we also went to lots of conferences and, and kind of tried to spread the word and do outreach and convince people this is a nice model that they can apply at their universities. But we were not very good yet at really reaching a very large audience and spreading this also through online means. And uh, yeah, basically reaching full potential in that sense by, by spreading it also online and really making lots of people aware of it. Uh, so we started in 2017 to develop a new website together with Waipana University from uh, Germany which is a central place, really, where people can find out everything they need to know if they want to set up a green office or if they want to learn more about the model. Uh, the website we have now in a uh, full website in English and German, and we're working on translating into lots of other languages as well. So Ukrainian basic version is already ready, and we're also working on our own basic version of the website in French. There's uh, case studies of 22 different green offices. So you see green offices, of course, are also very different at each different university. So here people can learn that how they actually work in Amsterdam or in Birmingham or at the different green office in Germany or in Italy. Uh, we also have lots of materials available about green office model, but also about sustainability in general. And where also existing green offices can learn more about what kind of projects they can do, how they can scale their impact in education or research or operations. But really the centerpiece of the, of the website is an interactive online course that we developed where people can learn step-by-step step how to set up their green offices. And they learn this by following fictional characters. We have a group of students, uh, see them here, who want to set up a green office at their university. And they learn step-by-step step which uh, how, how they get there, essentially. How they design their green office, how they want to be structured, what kind of projects they want to do. But also, of course, a very important part of uh, yeah, how to actually convince in the end the university management so you can click through kind of the different conversations that they have with each other and the stakeholders, and there's quizzes and videos and all these kinds of things integrated in there. So that's what we did the two, last two and a half years. And uh, yeah, we really see it having an impact already and uh, more and more greenhouse being created. So now actually at this point, really glad that we have now 40 green offices in countries throughout Europe. We also have one first one in, in Africa and uh, lots and lots of people, students and staff at universities who are interested in the model who want to also apply it at their university. So on the map you can see all the darker green points are, are actually green offices, all the lighter uh, green points are student groups or staff groups or a combination of both that are interested in the model and that want to set a green office up uh, at their local university. And of course, there's only so much we can do internationally, helping all these people everywhere. 
Um, so we also work with partner organizations. So we have in, uh, lots of different countries in Europe. There's national networks that work on sustainability that have uh, endorsed the Green Office model that uh, tell basically their members this is a, a good concept that you can apply and that work with us on, on spreading the model in their countries. And also to connect, actually, the greenoffs.org exists in their countries. Yeah, I'll hand it back over to Felix to <laughs> share some reflections. So coming back full circle, um, what we did over the, the last 10 years, just a couple of reflections we wanted to share about our story in particular, maybe also how it stands out to some of the other stories you will hear today on the Alumna Day. So one thing that's really cool to think about our story is how as a, as a group of, of students, so we graduated as bachelor and master students, we then really worked together over multiple years to create a social enterprise, to create a movement, um, and this is something that I think is really inspiring and also really cool on, on how we did it. And we mainly did it through perseverance and, and teamwork. So until today, people are still involved. Some of them are working full-time, others have other jobs, they're still contributing in different ways, and it's really a cool group that started it back then and new people came in that continued this over, over those years. It's also a really nice story of how as an NGO or as a social business you can decouple your organization from the impact you're trying to create. So we went beyond talking about rootability the last years, we saw that, and focused really on the, the Green Office movement and strengthening that, creating a logo, creating identity, a narrative around it, a website so that other people can link into that. And also, what's really powerful in our way, so a lot of social businesses are, yeah, they don't generate so much income themselves. So it's obviously a question of how do you support all the people that you actually want to help. And we are one of the few organizations that actually leverage online learning through an online course, through a website for people to actually help themselves in order to learn and, and know the things that they need to know. And I would say these are like four things that really stand out about our story. I was really happy also today that yeah, all of the other people that were involved came here as well. So thank you. <laughs>